Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, Daniel Dubois, let's talk about him because I made a video a couple of days ago talking about Joshua and Dubois and how I felt that um, Joshua, although he is a doesn't have the greatest chin, I don't think he's got a China chin, but it's not the greatest. Nevertheless, I've, I think people who have cast aspersions on his heart are wrong. And I think that whereas Dubois has definitely quit on two occasions, and again, I'm not a, not someone who hates on boxers for quitting. That's it's their right to do so if they feel they need to get it, get out and you know save themselves to fight another day. Okay, um, he definitely quit. Joshua did not quit against Ruiz. Some people are saying he did. He didn't. Um, I think that probably stems from a some sort of dislike of Joshua for whatever reason, his personality or maybe something he said outside the ring. I don't know. But I don't, I don't think Joshua quit against Ruiz. I think he lost his way and I think he knew he was. it wasn't his night. But um, he, he kept getting up from the knockdowns. And, um, you know, yeah, he spat the mouthpiece out to gain more time. That's not what a quitter does. A quitter takes a knee, goes down like Dubai did against Dusek. Here's 8, 9, 10, and then gets up. That is quitting, okay? You can argue that some people mentally quit in the sense that they believe they can't fight or they can't win. They, they can't fight a winning fight. So in a sense, they've given up, you know, thinking they can win. So in that sense, they've quit. But Teddy Atlas used to talk a lot about game quitters. And there are some boxers who get to the point where they've totally lost their way in a fight. They don't see how they can win, but they'll, they'll keep taking their lumps and they won't actually physically quit. I think Joshua probably is... That's the closest definition to him against Ruiz. He didn't quit. He didn't quit. But, you know, not physically quit. You know what I mean? Anyway, I want to talk about Dubois because he's made a couple of comments that I think are quite interesting and that may shed some light on his own mental fortitude or his own um, – how he's dealt with the fact that he – I mean, he knows he quit. Um, but how he's dealt with – sharpening his mind, getting his mind to the point where he's not going to quit, where when the going gets tough, he can work through it, he can fight through it. Um, he could not unravel mentally like he did against Usyk. And I think that these are quite interesting comments because he says, when I'm in training camp, I sharpen my mind. I play out the fight over and over and it's just meditation and visualizing. Um, I do a lot of that and the sparring helps. The camp atmosphere all helps as well. The fight sells itself based off me and AJ and what we both bring and what I bring especially. Don't forget, Dubois is the IBF champ. You know, he got updated after the win over Hergovic and Usyk gave up the belt. Um, and uh, Dubois says, we'll see how it goes, but I'm going to be in camp, locked in and focused. I'll have tunnel vision about getting that victory. Now, Dubois is not a speaker, is he? Let's be honest here. But he used a couple of words in there that I think are always quite interesting to sort of pour over he said i play the fight over and over and it's just meditation and visualizing now visualizing is something that i first did back in the day I think I did it in 1995 was the first time i did it now they call it mindfulness which is a kind of a variation of it but essentially the same thing all right um and i won't go into exactly what it is because it can mean different things to different people but it's essentially you are in the moment right and you shed all the possible woes, the possible worries, the fears, the hypothetical um, damage you think might await you. You shed what's gone in the past that is, is trying to negatively define you. You basically clear your mind. It's almost like resetting yourself. And it can work for some people totally, and it can completely not work for other people. But the mind, as we know, is a very, very complex thing, and there are all sorts of triggers in it, and the psyche, the psychology, the ego, it's all tied together, and it's all, it, it can be a minefield. And there are very, very few people who, when you ask them, how do you feel, they'll go, yeah, I feel great, I feel fantastic, or are you really content? Oh, I'm totally content. Very few people will go that far. Some will. But, you know, it's in other words, it's something that has to be worked on. It has to be you have to sift through it. You have to go through it, you see. And Dubois seems to have twigged something here because as a, a very young man, one might almost say um, a man-child when he fought Joe Joyce, 
he was fighting almost on, you know, to instruction. And then when he got lost and when he got that busted eye socket or damaged eye, whatever it was, it's a very bad injury and he quit. Okay. So what do you do? You learn from it. Well, he looked he looked actually half decent against Usyk. I mean, he wasn't completely outclassed. He was losing the fight, but he was he looked like he was there to give Usyk trouble and he made Usyk work for the first five rounds, six rounds maybe. But then he unraveled when Usyk got his skates on, sussed him out, started putting the heat on him. Dubois mentally unraveled. So again, you've got to go back and say, why did that happen? And if you are the type of person to whom meditation, visualization, mindfulness works, and again, it doesn't work for everyone, but if, if it does work for you, that's a very good way of, of forming a base, a, a foundation for building on that. Because the psychology of fighters is, well, the psychology of anyone is complicated, but for fighters to actually go into a ring knowing that you could be beaten up, cut, have swellings, be in a great deal of pain, killed, damaged for life, whatever, that is pressure. <laughs> and that's why I admire boxers so much, even journeymen with 100 losses. They do that for a living. It ain't easy. It's not easy. Anyone who's ever been punched in the face knows that that's not easy. So I think Dubois is doing the right thing and that this actually bodes well for if he was to get in trouble with AJ, AJ, let's say he's flawed or he gets up or he's cut or AJ is winning the fight after six, seven rounds, you know, out jab and he can't get past the jab. I think that this, this type of preparation for Dubois who let's be honest is, you know, that we always say he might be on the spectrum or something I mean, having worked with a lot of people who are, you know, they've got behavioural issues or they've got, you know, like, like I mean, borderline. Uh, you've, you've heard about borderline personality disorders. There's actually about 12, 15 personality, personality disorders. It's not just borderline personality, BPD. There's lots of others. I've worked with people who've got, who are autistic. You know, Try to find a way in and punch, press the right buttons in their minds. Because the answers are in, in the person. Not, it's not like I, as a support worker... It's not my job to give to tell him what to do. My job is to, in a sense, punch a few buttons, make him think about a few things, and then they will find their own answers. And the way, one of the ways of doing that, one of the ways is through, you know, mindfulness, visualization, whatever. Maybe that is Dubois' way of doing it. Um, and if so, you may you may see if he does get in trouble, he actually works through it. And if you think about it, in his last fight against Philip Hergovich, who most people were picking to, to beat Dubois, I know I did, I thought he'd beat Dubois, um, he, he was shipping some punishment. I mean, Hergovich was, looked badly prepared, he didn't even, didn't even bother having his bloody hair cut, but he looked to me like he was, you know, not prepared mentally for that, for a tough night. And um, But he was still, he was still pinging some right hands off, off Dubois' face um, and Dubois was soaking him up. Dubois' chin ain't that bad. I know he was down against Lorena with that with a temple shot, but you can get caught early, caught on the temple and that you're going to go over. Um, Dubois seems, he, in short, he seems to be learning from his mistakes and working on things. And let's not forget, Dubois is only 26 years old. That's no kind of age for a heavyweight. It's just young, you know. Um, you get the, you know, the freakishly young ones like Mike Tyson was incredible. 18 year old in well, not 86, he turned pro. 85, he turned pro, was it? I can't remember, 85 or 86. And Moses Atama is, you know, 19 years old, incredible prospect, uh, only 19. But 26 is young for heavyweight. And some you know, people have their own journeys. It goes, at the, it goes at their own pace, you know, and you can, you learn things, you know, that's why you get people of, 50 or 60 years of age who are very immature and are like kids, still like children. And you get people who are sort of 18 who are seem wise beyond their years. I mean, I was talking to someone I know, her, her son is 11. I was talking to him a few weeks ago. I've never met a kid of 11 who's that mature. You know? <laughs> what do you want to be when you, when you, when you get older? Oh, a lawyer or an accountant. Really? Oh, so what are you going to do about it? Are you, well, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing, you know, and I think that. And if I do this, and then, oh, I'm not, you know, this kid's been, this kid's been on this planet before. <laughs> it's a reincarnation job. <laughs> you know, some people are just naturally mature and it, it's upbringing and nature versus nurture, the, that, that whole argument as well. But, um, but yeah, Dubois, someone who did seem quite, quite, like quite an immature, very, very shy guy. 
he's had to find his way. And I think also with Don Charles in his corner, Don Charles being, you know, the surrogate father figure, even though Dubois' real father is is, is big on the scene, a big part of his team. I think Don Charles has created the environment. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he talked, Dubois said, you know, I'm going to be in camp locked in and focused. You need the right environment for that. And I think Don Charles, he can read Daniel. And I don't know whether Don Charles' background is very similar to Daniel's father's. But, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're not. Maybe they're different and, and they both serve a, an individual purpose, you know, and you put it all together to create one one picture, you know. But I thought, this was, I thought these were interesting comments from Daniel. And, he again, he is not someone who um, who is particularly a big speaker, big talker. But, um, I mean, I've heard people say he's stupid. I don't think he's stupid. I think he might be on the spectrum somewhere along the line, but I don't mean he's stupid. You know, he's, he actually seems like quite a nice lad, doesn't he, Daniel Dubois? So I think uh, I think I think this bodes well for Daniel. Um, I still make AJ the favourite in the fight, but yeah, yeah, and I like Dubois as well. I don't mind it win. I don't care who wins, as long as the right man wins. The right man being the one who deserves to win. I don't want this guy in the distance, and then there's any kind of controversy. I always hate that crap. Anyway, 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 IBF heavyweight title fight, Daniel Dubois. What do you think of him? What do you think about these comments that he made? Let me know. Leave your comments below. Uh, and of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I always appreciate it. And please hit the like button because they count those likes. Pew, pew. Thanks a lot. All right. I always appreciate it. Bye for now.